Hello and welcome to Procontation Points Video Snark. I read bad books so that you don't have to. I'm continuing my read through of A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. Not the first video, go check out the others. Links are posted below. Before I do this week's chapter, I wanted to take a moment and say that these are the last two chapters. When I'm doing regular snark in my two chapters a day format, I can usually handle the books. Like, reading a book a month is a pretty reasonable goal for me. But in this two chapters a week format, the book just stretches on and on, and I'm so freaking sick and tired of it by the time that I get to the end. No matter how excited for the book that I was, no matter how cute the little outfit that I made, just get me out of these stupid kitty ears and potions, Top. I do not want to read a single thing more about Persephone or Hades or literally anybody. Anyway, chapter 25. In truth, she'd imagined gaining her powers in Hades. She'd imagined having the best of both worlds, and said she had neither. It's really hard for me to summon up a single ounce of sympathy for her when Persephone is determined to self-sabotage everything good in her life. Persephone goes home where she basically has a nervous breakdown over everything. Luxa comforts her some, but as usual, not too much time is spent with Persephone's friend. To make matters worse, Adonis's imposed deadline over when he'd release the blackmail photos is tomorrow. But Luxa's boyfriend is apparently a computer programmer and Persephone asks him to hack into Adonis's computer. I would complain that that's not how technology works, but I'm at the point in the book where I legit just don't care anymore. Anyway, Persephone arranges to meet not only Adonis, but Minthi as well. She calls them both out and says that she knows Minthi gave the blackmail photos to Adonis. Minthi then starts to have an emotional breakdown over not being picked, and she kind of rubs in about how Hades didn't tell Persephone about it. Aphrodite into Persephone's face and calls her an idiot for having written this mirror article about Hades in the first place. But in the same breath, Minthi also tries Persephone for being so blind to Hades' love per for Persephone. Without warning, Persephone then changes Minthi into the famed mint plant. And I know that that's how the original story with Minthi goes, but at the same time, there is literally zero build up to this. Just kind of poof, you are now mint. She spends way more time on Adonis. She first kicks him in the crotch, which he totally deserves, and then she starts trying to turn him into a tree. Adonis screams and begs that he'll do anything so long as she changes him back. Persephone toys with him a little bit and then tells him that if he touches another woman without her consent, she'll turn him into a corpse lily, which smells like decaying flesh. Adonis doesn't seem to understand what's happening here and says that there's nothing in it for him because he's that dumb, apparently. Persephone says that his literal life is on the line here. Persephone changes Adonis back and starts to leave with her new mint plant. However, before she goes, Adonis begs to know who she actually is. She says that she's the goddess of spring. I'd also like to pause and say that it's literally been like 12 hours since Persephone realizes that she actually does have powers, and she's gotten control over them insanely fast. Like, Mary soon level of awareness, but I'm also balancing at that point of, I just want to be finished with this, so let's move on. Persephone then goes to the greenhouse where she grew up. She faces down Demeter and calls her mom out on her nonsense, says that it would have been one thing if Persephone wanted to stay, but Demeter forced her into a cage, a prison. Demeter says that when Persephone was born, she went to the Fates. They told her that Persephone was destined to become the bride of Hades, and Demeter wanted to protect her daughter. Again, Persephone calls her mother out and says that Demeter only just wanted a companion. However, if Demeter had just let Persephone live her life, then they could have spent a lot of happy times in the greenhouse. Instead, it's come down to Demeter manipulating and lying to Persephone under the guise of protecting her, and Persephone choosing to walk away from the toxic situation. Persephone then tries to leave the greenhouse, but Demeter stops her powers from working, says that Persephone will be there forever. But Persephone is just done, so she uses her newfound growing powers to grow some plants super big and breaks the glass house. Chapter 26. Some time passes. Persephone graduates from college and begins to work full-time at the paper. She hasn't seen or heard from Hades since she was released from the contract, although she isn't going out of her way to see him either. She misses Hecate and the souls, but is kind of embarrassed to want to go back, even if it's just to see everybody other than Hades. Meanwhile, Persephone finishes writing the article about Hades, the one that would fix all of the damage that she started when she was angry and stupider than she is now, but that Adonis decided to publish for her. But enough about that, it's Lex's birthday, and the third God Run Club is probably not going to be half as terrible as the other two, right? Right? And it's not like Apollo could possibly try anything. Well, I would say maybe, but this is the last chapter, so...
Hecate then shows up and pointedly tells her that everybody in the underworld misses Persephone and begs her to come back. She says that she asked Hades what happened and he told her. Hecate is quick to remind Persephone that Hades insists that his love for Persephone has nothing to do with his bet with Aphrodite, but Persephone is obviously reluctant. Hecate asks if Persephone loves Hades. Persephone agrees and says that she's loved him since the beginning, which makes everything hurt even more. But she goes on to say that Hades hasn't been to see her, but Hecate says that it's because he's been giving her space. Persephone then looks out the window and sees Hades outside. Persephone runs out where they embrace and kiss, exclaiming over how much they've missed one another and how much they love one another. Hades then asks Persephone to live freely between the two worlds. He then asks for her to play cards with him in exchange for Persephone's clothes. The book ends on that note. So, final thoughts time. The reviews warned me that the relationship was one of those insta of things, but I'm not sure that I was ready for it. They basically looked at each other and said, Oh no, they're hot! And then randomly fell in love, with zero sort of emotional bonding or build-up or anything. Granted, this was a little bit better than things like The Mister, where they fell into bed together after about two seconds, and better than the random insta love that came out of nowhere in The Betrothed. Like, the actual relationship in this offered up no surprises. I went in expecting Persephone Hades, and that's exactly what this book gave us. Also, I mentioned this earlier, but like Persephone and Hades had literally nothing in common whatsoever. They find each other hot and they're both gods, and that's literally the only reason why they're apparently together. I was also bracing myself for Demeter being terrible, but I was uh, somehow still angry at just the cold-hearted shrew who showed literally zero remorse over what she'd done to her daughter. Even when Persephone went to confront her mom, Demeter still didn't get it. And then that scene just kind of ended, and I guess that we're just supposed to accept it? And Persephone's personality, it was just kind of all over the place. Like, pick a lane here, book. The narration really wanted us to think that Persephone was actually a really nice girl, but like, literally never showed her being nice. Persephone basically had two moods. Being a doormat and being an <laughs> There was kind of no in-between with her at all. I'm not sure if I'll be over Persephone going from I don't have powers to having such perfect control that she could use her powers to turn Adonis' limbs into tree branches without flat out murdering him in less than 12 hours. I'm also still angry that Adonis openly roofied Persephone and literally nobody did anything about it. Like, Persephone treated his drugging and assaulting her on the same level as him submitting her half-finished Hades article. And I, I really hope that I don't have to spell it out for people that it's not okay that the book would have done something like that. Also, was it just me, or was the world building in the story like a 1 out of 10? Greek mythology has so much to offer us, and there were times when it was really obvious that the author not only did her research, but she knew Greek mythology well. And sure, there was a parade of well-known characters from Greek mythology, but literally none of them outside of Hades, Persephone, Minthe, and Demeter had any actual impact on the plot. Hecate literally never once used her powers, and she might as well have just been some random handmaiden for all of the good that Hecate progressed the plot. And the editing in this book... <laughs> lady, it's literally free to use the grammar check on Google Docs. There was no excuse for this. Literally none whatsoever. So, yeah. Was this amazing? Hell no. Have I read worse books? You bet. This is leaning towards being more awful than mediocre, mainly because of scenes like Adonis trying to assault Persephone and the narration not caring about it. And I'm sorry, but I'm also really hung up over the grammatical errors. Anyway, as usual, I will finish reading the rest of the series on Patreon. You can join for $1 a month and read my snark of A Touch of Ruin and A Touch of Malice, along with so many other snarks that aren't up anywhere else. And now, the moment that you've been waiting for the announcement of the next book, Breach by K.I. Lin. And yes, it does appear to be more Twilight fanfic. I'm sorry that I've been going through a bender about those recently, but I'm trying really hard to get through my list of stuff for the blogs without adding anything else to the list. As usual, I do not have the wrap-up for the next book made just yet, so for the last time, the wrap-up for A Touch of Darkness.
Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. New videos are up every Monday, but stick around because I sometimes drop random videos on other days too. Just as a reminder, even if you can't financially support me, there are other ways to support me. The first is watching this video as well as all my other videos. It's also important to like and subscribe. Finally, you can share this video with all of your friends so that they can help as well. If you're already caught up with all of my videos, you can go to Tumblr for my main book snarks, always free and updated every morning. And if you've already read all of my main snarks, you can find even more snark on my Patreon. You can access it for $1 a month, plus you also get early access to my main Tumblr snark. Special thanks to Dawn, Phoebe, and Nikki for supporting me on Patreon already. If you want to hear your name in my video next week, either support me on Patreon or make a one-time donation. Do you like my snarks so much that you want me to snark your writing? I do that too! For just $3 per chapter, I will tell you how awful that your writing is. But not to worry if you feel like you couldn't take the criticism. I also offer regular book editing as well. $3 for every 5,000 words. You can contact me on any of my social media platforms if you have further questions. If you want to read some of the things that I've written, you can purchase my works on Amazon. I have a slew of erotic short stories and now two full-length novels. I also sometimes run flash sales on my stories and if you don't follow me on any social media you might want to do so just so you can know when I might be offering more things for free. Links for everything will be posted below. See you next week guys!